win the game fast. You just want to have security in knowing that you can clear boards early and often. And it's not a bad strategy. However, we're going to see if... It, look, and Demon's Dragon Demon get banned out here. That's how secure Chin is against that Dragoncraft deck that isn't using Tilting. It yes. It's it's very scary when you do see that combo come out, but and Demon is just playing the control ramp version of that. So he's not... He's not threatening anything that could push the game fast, so to speak. He's just playing options that will keep him alive and kind of win over the course of a bunch of turns in a late game. That's right. And if you thought Neutral Blood was a meme, we saw Neutral Blood do a lot of work yesterday, and it's here to stay. And bringing another person into the top eight, at least one, I, I think this deck is awesome. Yeah. It, it destroys, you know, the tilting at Windmill's deck faster than it can go off. It basically just has a better curve than most mm -hmm. decks just be by way of dealing damage on curve. Absolutely. Neutral blood and its early curves are fairly consistent as far as an aggressive blood deck goes. You know, the Baphomet always draws you great options. You have incredible value off the Strix. Hector is very good currently in, in the state of the game. And even one drops like the Wise Merman just really help in so many scenarios where you're just looking to push that extra point of damage here and there. It's also one of those ways that you can actually utilize all of your play points almost every single turn. Of course, we saw one turn here where Chin missed, but it just allows you to play that one extra thing that gives you that maybe one extra two, maybe even more damage over time in the early game. Yeah. This Wise Merman already put in work <laughs> and swung already the one time, the two times that he needed to. Um, and I think that's important, right? This damage over time is going to be very impactful for Chin as he moves towards the mid game. Talk to me a, a bit about uh, the Hell Blindy pickup. So Hell Blindy, I actually really like it. It's this end game thing. Like you got to think, especially when you're playing Neutral Blood, even if, especially if you're on the play. How many evolution orbs do you really have access to, right? You really need to push that damage early. Sometimes you need to board trade effectively so that you don't get value traded into things like that. Hell Blindy is just this really nice option that's kind of like Hector in the late mm. game that you get to play down. You don't have to use evolution orbs, and you can still destroy some things on the field. If they don't have anything on the field, it's just a ton of damage to face. It's like extra Phantom Cats almost mm -hmm. in the late game. Mm -hmm. Very, very useful. And again, looking to both save, uh, make easier the decision to evolve for face damage mm -hmm. rather than for board control because you know that there is that opportunity to kind of take control off out of hand with the Hellblindy. But let's look at the game state as it stands right now. Going into the evolution turn for and Demon and... Uh, yet to find any kind of uh, uh, spell boost or Daria here. Mm -hmm. Able to get the Chimeras down to six, but I feel like you kind of want something a little more impactful here. I kind of want to talk about the inclusion of the laboratory, the silent lab that we see in hand of and Demon right now. So I see a lot of lists starting to include one of these just to kind of power up their concentrations, I believe. It's a nice on-curve play. However, when you get stuck with that card in your hand, it doesn't spell boost. If you don't have a concentration in hand, you're not really getting value off of it. Mm -hmm. It does also work with Golem Assault later down the road, so it's not, you know, the worst card. Mm -hmm. It's just an interesting include to me that on an early turn, it doesn't spell boost, and that's yes. exactly what you want your deck to be doing. I mean, I feel like, especially in SEAO yesterday, we saw a lot of silent laboratories in the lists that were running Daria. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like we even saw saw it get played once. I think I think one time we saw in hand, maybe it got played in the later turns just because it was an option to play. Yeah. But it's not like the central focus of the deck by any means. I just feel like it's a little risky to run a card like that, especially if it's an early drop. If you're planning to play it on a turn two, it doesn't do oh. anything for the rest of your hand. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna use a wind blast here. Trying to push push that face damage when he can. But again it's kind of it's kind of weak boosting, right? Mm -hmm. He's going to have this tempo swing with the Chimera, and because he's on the draw, it means he has more evolution orbs to kind of control the board, which is basically the best thing that can go for Ain Demon right now, right. given and his I, scenario. I think the way that Ain Demon is playing is very significant to note. reason I say that is because you can't be afraid, especially when you're playing against, like, Neutral Blood. Mm -hmm. You just don't have the time. You know what I mean? To just sit back and play defensive the entire game. You have to pace with them. Yes. Otherwise, they're just going to take over in the late game. And I think that attacking there instead of trading, even if it was a value trade, mm -hmm. probably not the best option, and Andemon sees that line. Yep. There we see the Baphomet again pulling up a fairly high-value card here for the deck. Got the Storm from hand. And I think Chin is probably thinking about what the next turn for Andemon could be. And we talked a lot about this with Daria. Not knowing how strong your opponent's hand is and how quickly they can operate and with how much strength, right? A turn 5 Dara could be absolutely devastating. That's right. 
or it could be fairly innocuous. Also, just how many piercing runes, you know, if you're Chin, how many piercing runes do you have, Andemon? Mm -hmm. What makes sense this turn if you have one, if you have two, or if you have a Daria board next turn? Again, one of the aspects of Daria that we really like and that we've talked about, very unassuming. You don't know what they're going to be producing on any given turn because of what they've drawn in what order with their spell boost. It's just very hard deck to read. Mm -hmm. Decides to set up the ward and evolve behind it, and that wise Berman has done more than his fair share. Oh, yeah. Playing one drops in this format feels really good right now. Against Shadow and against Forest, you know, they can mm -hmm. knock those down. But against sometimes slower decks like Daria, when they don't draw, a, you know, a whole heap of magic missiles, it's really hard to deal with those early yeah. followers. I think that guy has swung four times. Yeah. Every single one two face, but here comes a Chimera play now. And plus the Evolve means these two for ones are starting to go are going to start going very in favor of Van Demon. Mm -hmm. Do you want to put him in Vengeance? Ah. Well, unlike yesterday, uh, I don't think Dark Generals are making appearance in these neutral blood lists. We saw it as a tech option yesterday. Ooh. Not sure if it's what you would expect normally. All right. So he's got a few options here. Phantom Cat could roll more face damage. The real question is, does Chin have enough resources to blow through things like Ward? Mm -hmm. This is interesting. I think the safest play is probably Hector because and Demon, like we said, has been playing this very tempo-oriented game. I'm going to keep pace with you, yes. and eventually I'm just going to out-tempo you with more spells per turn than you're playing. Chin's really got to think here. How am I going to set up the next two turns? Because that's about as long as this game is going to go, is yes. another two turns. How do I do that without dying? How do I present the best possible lethal scenario? It's interesting. I feel like he probably only has a turn to fight with the board here. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Hey, check this out. He's going to leave the Savage Wolf up with one. This almost feels like a full trade turn, which is interesting. Because he's going to have to go into that 6-4, yeah. Yep. And I think this is going to put him way behind, especially we know there's another Chimera in hand. We've got another ward in hand for Andemon in the form of Golem Assault. I think I think Andemon played this played this game very well. Yeah. Yeah. I really like I mean he, he had his options, was able to kind of get through that four, five, six turn phase with just enough defense to mm -hmm. to kind of tide him over. That's absolutely right. And Andemon just has so many cards left in hand. It it really just goes to show you that maybe you just don't need all these cards and a couple Chimeras against another aggro deck or even a tempo deck just mm. kind of takes over the game by itself. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a tough situation. How oh, Blindy going to try to do some work here. But of course, the targets are random. Yep. Not, not quite enough, enough to make it happen. So I think it's it's interesting. I do think Hector was probably the, the play there. That was the only real way to kind of extend your time in the game. Right. Putting the ward body up means that it has to be dealt with. Unfortunately, Chin did not put something on the board that had to be dealt with, and mm -hmm. Andy Mid just kind of ran away with that one. A classic scenario of ward is good against <laughs> yes. board. Right? Yeah. Board aggression, get the ward. And one way that you stop decks like this, whether it be Neutral Blood or Daria, is to put those roadblocks into place uh, so that they have to stop and respond mm -hmm. to them first before they're thinking about evolving and going face. Mm -hmm. Things like that. So, Yeah. I think that, you know, uh, Neutral Blood, obviously very aggressive, can do a lot of work and actually had a pretty strong hand to, to kind of pair with it, right? Absolutely. But... I do think it is one of the aggressive decks that doesn't have a good way to shoot past the ward. It's not like it Burn Rune was, right? right? Where Burn Rune actually has a bunch of options, whether that be a board wipe that also does face damage, mm -hmm. whether that be a mutagenic bolt that just maintains your own board and changes anything with ward into a flame wrath. Master Mage this Levy, all game. these options to just keep pushing while you don't really have to worry about some yeah. wards that are left up and things like that, absolutely. Bloodcraft doesn't really have that card that can just bypass that and enable you to still swing face. That's right. And it's very interesting to note that Chin was on the play with his neutral blood deck against Daria, and Daria did not play a Daria and still, I feel like, easily won that game. I actually, again, I think it goes back to, in fact, the Daria deck being on the draw, right? Mm -hmm. Because it gives, gives you that extra evolution warp, means your Chimera turns are even more scary, right? right. 
And that was important because he was able to do things like play his Golem Assault, have that spell boost the Chimeras, and then get the added value of having that ward down and the Chimera being boosted to a, to a more efficient cost. The board swing is just too much. And this is one thing that I was kind of talking about yesterday as well in the decision to not ban Dragon out. And if, in Andemon's case, he's playing the ramp control package into a Daria and a Neutral Blood. I feel like it has favorable matchups in each. Mm. So why let the Dragoncraft deck through? I'm not sure. This is one of those types of decks, I think, that just is going to run away with the game as well. Yep. Grimner plus the Blazing Breath is going to be insanely good here. For and even, and I feel like that really, really, again, Ward putting a hard stop here. That's right. Now, in saying that, I have played this matchup a decent amount, and Phantom Cats can kind of just topple you over as Dragoncraft mm -hmm. because it's unmitigatable damage. It also produces a big threat. It really just depends on how much damage they deal. Mm. I do think I would feel more comfortable with that situation if Chin could maintain this board state for mm -hmm. just another turn, right? I mean... I think why this feels so bad to me is that Andy even hasn't hit his evolution turn, then you're already losing your board. Right. Right. And, and without playing cards like Snarling Chains or things like that to help you push through, it gets a lot harder when you have to do it with all followers. Yes. Fortunately, Chin does have the Angelic Knight, but he's going to have to trade away his board to still basically exactly. get all of those effects eaten up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to make Andy even feel very comfortable and maybe even comfortable enough well, I guess it would be kind of a risk, but I do think that there is definitely a world where he builds himself enough space to continue ramping and then get to turns where he might be able to stabilize. That's right. And with what we can see already with a Draconic Fervor and Sybil, the healing is not going to be lacking, at least for the early part of this game. So, And Demon's looking pretty good here, but Chin does have the options to keep drawing cards throughout the course of the game with those two Phantom Cats already in hand. So this, I feel like, will be a little close game until we see and Demon draw more of his cards. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else he has access and to. And Demon is going to respect the board here, but I still think even even in doing so, you're still fighting a losing battle, right? Because you didn't lose your battle net, mm -hmm. but you did skip a turn of damage, and there's still the board that and Demon can use to swing back and get this value trade here that we see. And I really like this. So this is a subtle play because Sybil didn't get any value that turn. However, mm -hmm. yeah. You have to get that Strix yeah. off the table. And you still are protected with a ward mm -hmm. that is really hard to Evo over. Luckily, Chin did draw into a Razor Claw. Yeah. And, and has a Lyrial. Yeah, and yep. Lyrial. Yeah. That's fair. Lyrial's still amazing. We could, yes. We're going to talk about it every day. Play Lyrial, guys. So good. He's going to leave a 4 2. But again, this is kind of a scenario where now we've activated Salamander Enhance, right? Mm -hmm. So I think with each step of the way, Andeman feels more comfortable with kind of, you know, just playing his options one by one. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Breath of the Salamander is the best option here. Unfortunately, it's not the best use because it's not like an entire board of things. Yes. However, playing a Fervor into a full board also feels pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Can't really do that. Yeah. And this might be it. This might be the opportunity to just start phantom catting and hoping you, you push some significant damage to face. And now with that help Lindy drawn, that just makes me feel so secured that now Chin is actually overtaking because he has just this great push, like mm -hmm. Phantom Cat into Phantom Cat or Hell Blindy to just deal all of this unmitigatable damage mm -hmm. going into the endgame. Already has a Savage Wolf and Razory Claw in hand. I feel like his hand's shaping up really nicely for this endgame. Do you go for the scenario where you say Angel Knight Blood Wolf? or Blood Wolf Angelic Knight, right, for the order. Mm -hmm. um, and then try to save your burn, so to speak, your Phantom Cats and your Razory Claw to try to close the game out. I think that it's really good to force Dragoncraft to use its evolution orbs early so it can't just OTK you out of nowhere. Um, you know, Four. Oh, oh, two. Oh, Dang not, it. Not quite. But a Razory Claw draw. Yeah. So kind of a 50-50 there. Yeah. The Razory Claw won't give you the innate two damage, but it is... Technically drawing three damage. Right, right. And uh, what, what we've even discussed about Burn Rune Craft to kind of finish out the question you were asking me, it's mm -hmm. always about how much damage can you deal with your followers early, mm. and then how much burn do you have left over. I don't think that's going to change much for Neutral Blood. It's just get those Evolution Orbs in, get the damage in, and then once they're low and they try to start dealing with your board, that's when you just start throwing everything to the face that you have. And again, we see a scenario where it's like, you could Sahak Baha, mm -hmm. 
And I think that's probably the choice because a, a Salamander Enhanced on just one card doesn't feel the best. Yep, and next turn, there is an option. Interesting. A pre-evo on the Sawquill here. Yeah, going to try to maintain a big body on board. Huh. Which I guess means... I'm gonna try to force Chin to evolve into the follower. Yeah, I guess I guess that face. is the the plan here. It's like, okay, I think you're gonna play another Phantom Cat. I think you might be playing a Hellblender or something. I'm mm -hmm. gonna force you to use that last evolution orb, so you can't use it on something like a Savage Wolf mm -hmm. later in the game. I like it. I do think though, this is actually a moment of opportunity for Chin. I think if he does just play the Phantom Cat and evolve over it, what is really the turn for Andeman, right? You probably j are just going to try to Draconic Fervor into Salamander, but that's essentially another skip turn. Well, I think th I think that's the whole plan. I think it's like, please play your Phantom Cat, deal me whatever damage it deals, get it down to one defense so I can play my Draconic Fervor. Mm -hmm. It gives him a chance to finally play that card, get some defense back. What is even the way to play around that? I guess to try to diversify the followers on board so you still have something that can swing? Try to flood here. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, play the Savage Wolf, play the Angelic Knight, play the Goblin use that evo for face damage because it's probably the last opportunity mm -hmm. you're going to get without another savage wolf drawn and then just like you said go into the burn package at the end of the game mm -hmm. what an ordinary interesting hey, check this, out. this is a guaranteed four damage yes. phantom cat essentially uses his play points a little better so i do like yes. the help when he play better than the phantom cat still has the opportunity to Clear the board here, and draw. And put him to that all-important 10-play point capital mm -hmm. that he needs next turn to start playing out these Bahamas. So, oh wow, that's a pretty good draw. Mm -hmm. More face damage I think here. it's just about doing, how do you deal with the Israfil, right? Because it's definitely going to be an option yeah. in terms of both healing, you have the Evolution Orb, you know, and if you flood the board too early, the Bahamut's going to come down and shut you out. Now, what is nice about what Shin has is that a lot of the damage is straight from hand, right? Mm -hmm. So even if the Bahamut does clear out the board, you've already kind of got some value. But is it enough to reach 13, possibly 17? That's right. And Chin does have a lot of options in hand. So he does have Hector. He does have Angelic Knight for wards on very specific turns if you feel like he is in danger to some kind of a mm -hmm. Queen of the Dread Sea play or some kind of a crazy play that he wasn't expecting. Mm -hmm. He knows he has some defenses built up. It's going to be interesting, too, because you kind of want to play the wards after you see the Bahama drop. Mm -hmm. But you kind of want to play the Angelic Knight accompanying the Savage Wolves because... When else are you actually going to get that opportunity to use its plus one damage effect? That's true. Interesting turn. So it looks like he did the math, and he's just going to go for it here. Next turn, he does have the opportunity to Phantom Cat plus Razory Claw yeah. in order to just steal the game here. Is his Hector active? He's got two neutral cards. And that might be very dangerous, right? You could actually Hector Razory Claw as well. That's right. This Israfil is yeah. a big lady taking over the field, putting Andeman back up to 10 defense and producing a 10-10 body. Okay, Hector is active. Which might delay that face damage. Actually, it will. But there's a second Israfil. Yeah. I think that might shut the door. This is what we were talking about, right? Like, it, it kind of swung back and forth. Like, Andeman had the healing early. Didn't look like he was going to have the healing going to late, but two additional Israfils before the end of the game. I think solidly puts Andeman right back into this race. That's going to... Yeah. Wow. But the reach of the neutral blood deck is quite quite powerful. It's just the healing provided in this control option of Ramp Dragon. But I think the hole that you were talking about initially, where these huge followers cannot actively be destroyed by the neutral bloodcraft deck because mm -hmm. they aren't playing cards that do that. Mm -hmm. One of those situations where you wish I'm Hector sorry. didn't have Ward. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And that's going to be painful. Now, yeah. you might have combos, right? Ooh. Oh. We'll see. Chin not giving up here. Zero. Oh, boy. And I think that's going to yeah. usher in a scoop from Chin. 
Couldn't make it work with neutral blood, and a lot of it is, we talked about the consistency of this deck, right? It can have the fast, aggressive turns that you mm -hmm. need, but if things go less than good for you, and you're just a little bit too slow, again, there's a bunch of late game decks that are running around now that That's just right. can pick themselves back up and just push through, especially when, like you mentioned, Burn Rune has been such a big part of the meta, right? Definitely respect to things like burn mm -hmm. and having healing in your deck is something that people are very cognizant of. There it is. Interesting. The for the final swing. And Chin going to go to the loser's bracket. 0-2 oh, here. And again, mm -hmm. I have to call into question not banning the Dragoncraft deck against the decks that I feel like just have really poor matchups against it. Yeah. I, it'll be interesting. I mean, I want them to keep challenging Dragoncraft. Absolutely. Right? I want... I want them to continue doing that, but it is also in the sense of when you're in the tournaments, 